Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is called Garden Sprays 101. I want to give you the basics on what different sprays do, how you use them in a the garden, a little bit about recipes, but subscribe to my channel. I'll show you more details about the different recipes of the items you see here, how to use them in a the garden, how to identify problems in a garden. But if you want a successful garden and you want to battle insects and diseases, you really want to start in February with the plan. The ground's still frozen outside. There aren't really any plants out there, but I have to come up with a plan on how I'm going to deal with insects, pests, and diseases. And what you want to do is you want to be proactive. You don't want to be reactive. By the time you see problems showing up in your garden on your plants, there's going to be damage. So every year I write down when pests and disease show up in the garden. This is actually a small journal I sell at my seed shop if you want to pick it up I would appreciate it even if you've not done this before think back about when diseases show up and pests show up in your garden so I know for instance that leaf spot a fungal disease shows up May 15th if it's going to come and it usually affects my tomato plants I know around June 21st I have to start thinking about early blight which also affects my tomato plants powdery mildew shows up July 15th, spider mites around the beginning of July. Why is this important? Because the first thing, well actually the first thing I want to tell you is whatever recipe you find online for sprays, whatever you buy in the store, test spray your plants first. That means spray a couple of plants, partially on some of the leaves, wait 48 hours, look for damage. That's on you. There's variability on why a spray may work in my garden and not damage my plants and may damage your plants. And I'll talk about that as we go along. I'll also talk about it in the series. But always the test spray. The thing you want to do is be proactive. You don't want to wait. Like for instance, I know that leaf spot shows up and gets my tomato plants. I know early blight comes. I know that powdery mildew comes. It's not a question of is it going to show up in my garden. It is. So using the dates that I've tracked over the years, I start spraying really anywhere two to four weeks before the diseases show up. And I'll only be spraying once a week as a prevention. When you have outbreaks, you're gonna be spraying more often. I'll talk about that in the series. So those are the first key points I wanna to talk to you about is always test spray and then start spraying ahead of time before the diseases arrive. Now another thing people say, and it's, it's a truth and it's a myth. If you have healthy soil and healthy plants, they can fight off diseases better, but it doesn't mean they stop diseases and pests from getting on them. It also means that if a pest or a disease shows up on your plants, it is not your fault. 100% not your fault, okay? So don't listen to people that say, well, if your soil is healthy, then you're not gonna have these problems. And people that say, I never have these problems. I'm very happy for them, but every gardening zone is gonna have its different issues and different problems. So there are basically four types of spray. Now I sell neem oil at my seed shop. I sell peppermint oil at my seed shop. I use hydrogen peroxide right from the grocery store, 3% solution. It's inexpensive. It's changed the way that I can actually uh, grow my tomato plants and baking soda. So let's start with neem oil. Neem oil is effective, 100% effective. It's considered organic, but you want to make sure you buy 100% cold pressed neem oil with azadiractin in it. You want the compound azadiractin. Now, here's the thing. When you go to Home Depot and your big box stores, you'll see lots of stuff that say neem oil. That's garbage. Read the label, and if it says clarified hydrophobic extract of neem, they've taken out all the good components, left you with just oil, which is just neem oil, but there's no azadiractin, there's no additional compounds, there's nothing in there that kills the chewing insects. And, you know, again, subscribe, I'll go into more detail. But you use neem oil, 100% cold pressed with azadiractin, to spray on your leafy greens typically. When caterpillars come, eat the leaves, they ingest the neem oil with the AZ in it, and in a couple days they die off. It's very, very effective. Now when you buy it cold pressed, it's gonna be thick, it's gonna look odd. Just drop it into 
warm water and let it sit. That'll be liquefied by the time that we're done. Now my general neem oil recipe is one to two tablespoons per gallon of water in a sprayer and you just finely mist the tops of the leaves and the bottoms of the leaves. And as a prevention you're doing it about at least once a week, maybe every five days or so. It does hold up to the rain, um, but if it's a hard rain you want to replace it. You also want to put into the gallon anywhere from two tablespoons to a tablespoon of soap so that it uh, helps break the oil down. Oil will float on water obviously. The soap helps it um, get dispersed through the water. So you shake it up, spray, shake it up, spray, and then you're getting a nice fine coat of neem oil on your plants. And I use this really for kale, cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, um, all those related plants because I get the uh, white moth that le leaves, um, lays the eggs of the uh, green cabbage worm, which I was corrected. I used to call it the green cabbage looper. Anyway, they're green worms and they'll just chew the heck out of your plants. So I really like using neem oil for that. This is also an oil, so technically if it's sprayed small, soft-bodied insects, the oil coats them, smothers them, and sometimes you'll hear neem oil used as a miticide. But wherever you buy it, if you want it to control the chewing worms, the chewing caterpillars, it has to have the azadirectin in it or it's going to be completely ineffective. In fact, I think it should be illegal. They shouldn't be able to sell something called neem oil when it's not all the components in neem, but I won't win that battle. So neem oil is one to two tablespoons per gallon of water with enough soap in it so that when you shake it up, the oil disperses and stays dispersed for a couple of minutes and then shake again and spray. Now the next thing we have are your oils. This is peppermint oil. This has also helped me tremendously in the garden. I highly recommend it. Sell it at my seed shop. Two ounce bottle goes a long way because when you're making your peppermint oil spray, you're just using um, a teaspoon in a gallon. So it's really one teaspoon to two teaspoons of the peppermint oil in a gallon of water. You can really get by with one with all of these. You always start with the lower doses and increase it if you're not getting the results that you want. But you don't need to start with the higher dosing. So one teaspoon peppermint oil in a gallon of water and this is used as a repellent and a masking scent. So essentially let's just say you've got a garden and you've got these butterflies that come they smell say damaged uh, zucchini leaves when you break them off. That butterfly smells that plant, comes to there, lays eggs, those eggs become the vine borer. Using masking oils confuses these insects a little bit, the butterflies, so they have a harder time finding your plant. It is not super effective as a masking oil, but it helps. What I found it really good at is, is either killing and or deterring spider mites. I spray this, this at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, on the undersides of my cucumbers and undersides of my beans, and it has really stopped the spider mites. Uh, I'm not sure if it kills them off or it just irritates them and they leave or what it does. But just imagine, you know, if you ever get peppermint oil on your skin and touch your eye, it does burn a little bit. Imagine being a super small, tiny, microscopic almost spider mite and you get a mist of peppermint oil on you. It's going to irritate you. So this has really changed how I can grow beans and cucumbers and basically allows me to get um, allows my plants to grow longer and I get more production so neem oil is for the chewing insects that's what we use it for peppermint oil rosemary oil I also sell is more as for a repellent and a masking scent to mask the smells of your different plants that that's how sometimes the bad insects find your plants so next we have baking soda just your plain old baking soda which is um, sodium bicarbonate, and it is one to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. Now, here's why your sprays vary. For instance, you can even put sometimes three tablespoons into a gallon of water. I have well water, and my pH is pretty high. If I'm putting in two or three tablespoons into my well water and spraying my plants, that combination may damage my leaves. So I only use one teaspoon. If you have Water that may not be pH neutral. Actually, mine's not even pH neutral. It's above 7.0. I have to bring it way down. So if your water varies, if you're using rainwater, if you're using city water, if you're using well water, you have to pay attention to how many scoops of baking soda 
you're putting into the water. So always start with one tablespoon, work your way up. Baking soda is used as an antifungal. It does help stop outbreaks, but it's best at preventing outbreaks. And this is how it works in short. Again, for you know sprays and um, oils 101, I just want to give you a basic over overview. We'll get into more details. So when you get something like, uh, let's say powdery mildew comes and gets on your tomato plants, or the fungus um, of the uh, leaf blight, uh, or leaf spot early blight come to your plant, they like, the fungus like the certain pH level of the tomato plant. They feel at home, they land on here, it's a good pH, they start reproducing, reproducing and they start damaging your plant. When you spray baking soda on here, baking soda raises the pH level of the leaf and it makes it inhospitable to different fungi. So they don't hang around, they don't reproduce, and they don't affect your plant. Now, a rain comes and washes, washes this off pretty easily. So baking soda raises the pH level. You can also use a product called wet, wettable sulfur, and that brings the pH down. But wettable sulfur and baking soda work by changing the pH level on your plant leaf, and you can use them on different plants. So again, this is three different products for chewing insects, for repelling and irritating insects, and to change the pH level on your leaves to work as an antifungal, stop the plant, stop the fungi from getting attached, and also sometimes the change in pH can stop them from reproducing. Now my favorite hydrogen peroxide spray way is hydrogen I peroxide. Grow tomatoes in my garden. I've been using it for three years now. I have a lot of videos on it. In fact, if you just keyword search these different products, you'll find more videos. The recipes I'm giving you now are the ones that I've kind of um, changed slightly over the years, and that's what I use now in my garden. So hydrogen peroxide, first of all, is 12 tablespoons to one gallon of water. You can go all the way up to 16 or even higher, depending on the plant, but always start with the lowest dose. So it's 12 tablespoons per gallon. Hydrogen peroxide goes away in 24 hours because it's H2O2, it's an unstable molecule. When it hits your leaves, the sunlight hits the compound, it reacts, that reaction creates energy, that energy basically cleans your leaves, it kills off the fungi that are on there. It can also uh, bother and damage spider mites and the smaller insects because they're so tiny, the uh, chemical reaction of the sunlight hitting the H2O2 irritates them, sometimes kills them off. I use it to clean my plants. What do I mean by that? So you can use this as often as you want, you know, once a week as the prevention, twice a week as the prevention before the disease comes, and you can just spray the tops of your plants, the undersides of your plants, always spray tops and bottoms of the leaves, and this will clean off any fungi that are getting attached to your leaves and won't damage your plant. Test spray, I, when I first started this, it was about five years ago, I used a straight 3% spray on my pepper plants and I damaged and killed off all the leaves. They, they came back because it didn't damage the stems, but please test spray. So it's 12 tablespoons to a gallon. So I use all these products in combination. I start with usually two weeks before the problem comes with hydrogen peroxide, maybe once a week, spray them down, clean them off. Then I hit them with a baking soda spray, change the pH. You know, and I do that about once a week, every 10 days. And I'm looking, though, making sure the diseases aren't showing up. Now, if for some reason I go on vacation or I get tired and I don't make it, uh, the spray's regular, and an outbreak comes, I may do hydrogen peroxide every other day for three or four days, really clean up the plant. It makes a huge difference. My tomatoes went all the way into probably October, maybe November this year, until the frost killed them. They were not killed off by the diseases. So that's the quick overview of the different oils. This does not stay on the plant. It cleans the plant and it's gone within about 24 hours. Spray all your chemicals, your good chemicals, your organic products, early in the day or later in the day. Don't spray them in high heat. And I think we'll end with that as an overview. When you're spraying some of these, when it's 70 degrees out, low 80s, your plants do perfectly fine. If you start spraying these when the temperatures are 95 to 100, like when you see like 
your plant leaves kind of droop and they're kind of hanging there, they're weaker. So if you hit them with these sprays that worked perfectly safely when it was 70 or 80, when the leaves are weaker, sometimes these sprays damage the plant. So you want to be aware of that too. So spray early in the morning before the sun comes or spray later in the evening. And this is really important. If you haven't done it this year, start writing down when problems show up in your garden and then you'll be able to come up with a plan. So let's end with you understanding the different products here. Neem oil is really good for the chewing insects. Peppermint oil, rosemary oil is really good for repelling and insects and masking the scents of plants. Baking soda does a good job of changing the pH on here and stopping fungi from getting hold or spreading. And hydrogen peroxide does a really good job of cleaning your plant leaves. Now, once you have a routine down, it doesn't, and here we go, you can see how that's liquefied more instead of being thick like that. So just when you get neem oil, when it's thick like that, put it in hot water, you're good to go. <laughs> All right, so I'm laughing because I distracted myself by showing off the neem oil. I think I was going to say, now it doesn't sound as complicated where you're doing one, two, three, four, five different sprays every other day and you're, you're doing nothing out there uh, in the garden except spraying. It can be a lot when you first start, but if you track what's going on, you get down into a nice routine. You can uh, combine some of these together if you want. I'll talk about that in future videos if you want to subscribe. But it's not as overwhelming as you think, and it's a lot easier to do a nice walk through a preventive spray than it is to really have to deal with an outbreak in your garden. Preventive spraying really goes a long way. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. My journal does have a plastic cover in case you do get water on it. It's not going to mess up the cover. And it has my logo on there, and it says something that I really believe. A garden wants to give. If you're just getting started, as long as you try and help your garden along, you give it a try, your garden's always going to give back to you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a really successful 2020.